You know that crow that sits outside your house? What is that crow saying? In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the broadest level distinctions that people need to understand in order to begin to interpret crow language. And um, crows are, are often considered one of the exceptions of bird language in that the five voices of the birds don't exactly map onto crows in a, in a really precise way like they do on a, on a robin or a song sparrow. Um, and crows can be quite a confusing bird to, to try and learn because they're, they're very intelligent and they have a huge range of vocalizations. Some of their vocalizations are, are really specific and, and are only really used in, in one context and then other vocalizations are used for a whole bunch of different stuff. So, um, with all that, I mean, crows can, um, a lot of times people say, well, you know, don't, when you're learning bird language, don't really worry about the crows because it's just hard to, to figure them out. Um, but crows can actually bring some of the most important information that's, that's available to you out there in terms of which birds are talking about predators because, um, primarily because there's so many crows. I mean, crows are around pretty much anywhere that there's people, um, so you're likely to have them in your area, and you can hear them from such such a long distance, so that um, if you can learn the crow language, the, the bird language of crows, um, it'll really extend the distance at which you can detect predators, such as like an eagle or a hawk. Um, so, uh, the, the basics of crow language, um, I'm going to share with you a simple key to understand two basic patterns of calling that crows use. And for this video, I'm talking mostly about the caw. And it's the most common sort of sound that they make, but there's a huge variation in how they do it. Um, so, but we're going to take a look at uh, uh, two basic patterns. So, the, the first pattern is um, what, what I like to call an, a non-contextual call, and it's sort of akin to like a companion call that you would hear in, in the other birds, but it works differently in crows. So, what you'll hear is uh, the, the crow will usually be up in a tree, and it'll give off a burst of caws, maybe, you know, as few as one, um, but as many as like nine or ten, and um, they'll they'll give them off in rapid su in rapid succession. So ka 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 ka, and uh, then they'll be quiet for a little while, and you know maybe they're listening or they're doing something, um, and then they'll they'll call again. So you get this pattern of bursts of you know four or five calls and then silence and then four or five calls after a little while. And this can go on for quite a while, so you'll have a bunch of different repetitions. But the, uh, the cause will usually be pretty similar in, in sound. Um, and uh, so this, the, the key thing to notice in this pattern, it's really common, um, and it, that basically tells you that there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing specific going on that would be exciting the crow in any way, like like in an alarm situation. Um, when you hear that pattern of a few calls, then stop, and then another burst, and then it stops, and then another burst, and they're pretty, they're pretty consistent. Um, that, that's a sign that basically it's just crows kind of talking to each other, going about their normal activities, not really tracking an owl or anything like that. Um, so, if you can hear that, then it lets you know, like, oh, I can relax, like, the, there's nothing, there's nothing, um, really intense happening right now. Uh, the other kind of call is in academic literature, often referred to as unstructured calls, um, because they, they lack, this, this other pattern lacks that sort of really structured burst of calls, and then quiet and then another burst. It, it, that, it doesn't work that way in unstructured calls. And um, basically, um, 
it can happen in, in bursts or it can happen you know as a consistent pattern but there's usually a, a pretty high level of variation in the calls and um, these this other sort of call these unstructured calls can be linked to specific events so if you hear this going on um, it'll happen around hawks and owls and eagles and it'll happen in in other contexts like when when they're chasing around an osprey trying to steal the osprey's fish or even just protecting boundary territories or juvenile juvenile calls will be like this too so there's a lot of different reasons why they do it but um, the the thing to listen for is that it doesn't follow that structured bursting pattern and that it's highly variable so the you'll hear changes in the sound that the qual uh, the the sound of the caw um, you know, as you're listening, it might get louder. It might get, um, it might get more frequent. It might get really intense for a second, and then it'll kind of stop for a minute. Um, and this sort of highly variable pattern correlates with the intensity of the situation. So, if there's a really intense predator in the area, you'll hear like a really intense sound associated with that. And if it's something, you know, not so intense, then you'll see that reflected in the call. So, um, with that huge variation, there's obviously pretty much an unlimited depth that you could go to in listening to these calls. Um, but the, the main thing that I'm trying to get across in this video is that if you can just hear the difference between those non-contextualized, structured bursting pattern calls. Hear the difference between that and the other calls when there's something kind of intense happening um, and, the, and the pattern shifts. Um, then that, that'll that give your ear something to really hold on to when you're out there listening to crow language and it'll start you'll start to be able to make sense of what's happening out there. Um, and once you hear the, those calls and, and the unstructured calls and you can tell that there's kind of something going on um, it, it's just a matter of getting close enough to the source of it to be able to figure out what it is and oftentimes you'll see you know the osprey or you'll see um, an eagle or uh, you know it, any whatever is happening um, it's usually pretty easy to find as long as you you track it down so um, yeah hopefully that's that's helpful and because um, I know crow language is something that gets a lot of people um, mixed up in, in when it comes to, to learning bird language and I found it really challenging for, for a long time too and it was this just this one simple distinction that made a huge difference for me um, so yeah thanks for watching this video and um, if you want to hear audio recordings of the different calls, I, I actually have links to them to recordings of the sounds that I just referred to on my website. Um, so if you're already on my website, that's great. And if you're watching this on YouTube, um, there's a link to my website below.